LoRa features long-range communication capability and the internet is the heart of IoT devices. So how about combining the two technologies? Today in this video, we are going to program connect board that I've designed that has ESP32 S3, MCU and LA66 LoRaWAN module that will exchange data with a LoRaWAN gateway. We are also going to have a real example of using the Think network and compare it with the Helium network. We are also going to use the LoRaWAN gateway node red server to retrieve data from the TTN network by subscribing to the application MQTT broker. There are a lot of interesting topics to cover today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before with a lot of features like this castellated holes that I've used. They are also having more discounts and coupons for the upcoming Christmas, so don't miss the chance. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the hardware and the setup that we are going to use uh, in our tutorial. Uh, so here is the uh, connect board that I have designed. It's actually nothing but a development kit that has uh, ASP32 S3 RAW module connected over UART to LA66 uh, LoRaWAN module from Dragino. Uh, and I have here a USB to TTL converter in order to program my uh, ASP uh, MCU. And here I have an extra USB connector connect directly to the USB interface uh, of the ESP32, hoping to do debugging over GTAG interface. So I can do that uh, in another tutorial. And here I have an LDO that decreases the voltage level from 5 volt to 3.3 volt in order to feed both the uh, Dragon module and the ESP32. I've actually shared with you guys the assembly process of this board, uh, and it was actually like this. And I've assembled two of them. I have the other one over here. I'm working on a temperature and the humidity sensor. I will be having my own library in order to interface the sensor and share its data over LoRaWAN network. And the reason why I wanted to give the name Connect to this board is that since I have ESP32 S3, I will be having Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection. And with the LA66 LoRaWAN module, I can add to that uh, LoRaWAN communication. So I have many RF communication uh, interfaces to work with. Uh, and here we can see the pinout diagram of the connect board, which illustrates the supported RF communication uh, interfaces and the MCU pins that can be accessed from the board. So yeah, along with this board, I have here a LoRaWAN gateway, LPS8 version 2, that can communicate over LoRaWAN with the surrounding uh, LoRaWAN modules, like this one, or this one over here, over long distances that can reach up to 10 kilometers. And then the received data will be sent over Wi-Fi to the Think network or Helium network. Of course, I will be talking about the differences between them. All right, so now what I'm planning to do is that I'm going to let the ESP32 S3 read the data of the internal temperature sensor and share it over UART with the LA66 module, which is going to send that data over LoRaWAN to this gateway, which is going to send this data to the TTN network over Wi-Fi. And at the end of the day, we are going to see the string that we have sent over LoRaWAN on the TTN network console. So we can verify that uh, the sent data has been delivered uh, without any problem. So yeah, let's get the show on the road. All right, so here's the firmware that's running on the ESP32 S3. It is quite simple actually because the MCU does nothing but interfacing the LA66 LoRaWAN module over UART. So here, you, as you can see in the main, I'm configuring the UART where I have dedicated queues uh, that are responsible for handling uh, the UART reception and transmission part. I'm going to show them in a minute. And here I have the free RTOS task creation function. Uh, and at the end, I have the internal temperature sensor initialization function. Uh, I have it over here in a dedicated source file. So here I have initialization function and read function, which returns the value of the surrounding temperature 
uh, in a form of uh, float so let's get back to our main and have a look at our free artos tasks so here I have the UART event task that gets triggered uh, whenever a packet is received over UART I've covered that part before uh, and here I have the peripheral handler part which gets executed only when a packet is received over UART and then the received packet is passed to the parser in order to figure out what packet is received currently the parser that I've implemented it only looks for a join packet received from the LA66 module in order to know whether the module has joined the LoRaWAN network that's managed by the gateway and according to that information our MCU will start transmitting packets to the LA66 module uh, that carries the information of the temperature uh, as we are seeing over here so the temperature information is read from the internal sensor of the ESP32 and then the obtained value is put inside a string that's carried by this buffer and this buffer will be used in order to form uh, an AT command uh, that requires the LA66 module to send packet uh, over LoRa network to the LPS uh, gateway which is then uh, transmitted over Wi-Fi uh, to the TTN network so we can view this string uh, in the TTN network console so now let's do a demonstration and uh, see how the whole system works together to make things more clear alright so right now I'm at the thing network console where I can see my module is transmitting the temperature string uh, every one minute uh, and here I have my application registered so here I have two devices registered as you can see one of them is active right now there's actually one more thing to mention here is that uh, the way that you are seeing this string like this over here is that I'm using a payload formatter uh, over here that gets the raw data and converts it to uh, ASCII code so it can be something readable. There is one more feature that I like about the TTN network application is that it allows you to subscribe to a MQTT broker and transfer this data directly to your gateway so it can be accessed by your uh, IoT devices which actually makes a connection between LoRaWAN communication and Wi-Fi uh, and here I have my gateway also registered the gateway does not show the data because uh, some other device can also use my uh, gateway in order to transfer data so the big advantage of using uh, TTN network is that it's completely free you don't have to pay uh, money for every packet transmitted not like helium network where the network charges you for every packet uh, sent over it whereas in the helium community you will find more people using the network in order to earn a cryptocurrency so the coverage of the helium network is of course uh, larger so let's compare between the two of the networks so to be uh, more precise let's take an example so let's go to the city I live in Istanbul so here you, you can see the number of uh, TTN network gateways uh, installed uh, in one hexagon so you can see the number is quite huge whereas in the TTN network if I zoom to the Istanbul city where I'm living uh, I can see around uh, eight uh, gateways are installed in the whole city so you can see the difference uh, and here you can see my gateway used for electronics so yes now let's have a look at the uh, gateway settings so the gateway can be connected to the internet over Wi-Fi or Ethernet uh, I prefer Wi-Fi of course there are many tutorials online showing how to get your uh, gateway uh, set up so here in the LoRaWAN configuration uh, I've set my gateway to communicate uh, with the TTN network you can also configure this uh, gateway to communicate with Helium network as well there's also an important feature that this gateway has and it's the embedded uh, Node-RED uh, server so here I'm having my gateway is subscribed to the uh, TTN network application MQTT and I'm printing out over this node uh, everything received over that uh, connection and here are the logs where I can see the temperature string that's sent every minute uh, over the LoRaWAN network which is actually amazing because this will let my IoT devices connected to the same Wi-Fi network uh, access this data and make use of it I'm actually planning to do more interesting projects uh, with this uh, Node-RED server so stay tuned for that this brings me to the end of this video if you have learned something new please give this video a thumbs up and tell your friends about useful electronics stay tuned for the upcoming tutorials and bye bye